past. For they too gathered on the land here today that we're gathered on. And they did their business with respect. And therefore I ask that each and every one of you in here today does your business with respect. I also pay respect to any elders that are present and those of the future. For they will carry our wisdom and our knowledge and our dream time to our future generations. And they will protect country, our Mother Earth. I'm at a bit of a loss. I don't really know why we're gathered here today. Legislation, policy, process and procedure. If it doesn't suit, let's move the goalpost and we'll start again. We'll modify. David. You questioned about legislation in regards to mining in the Darrell National Park. If it doesn't suit, let's pass a bill. And Jess, you questioned approvals. We all know if it doesn't suit, let's move the goalposts. Government's good at that. We'll pass a bill and we'll start again. talk about Mother Earth. She's the giver of our life. She gives us food and she gives us water. Land Council, if not on a weekly basis but a daily basis, we are out there seeing the destruction of significant sites. Sites that are all over this country. Sites that belong to each and every one of us. They belong not only to us, but they belong to future generations. Our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren. And we are destroying them. Legislation in this country is allowing them to be destroyed. I'm not talking 200-year-old sites. I'm talking 10,000, 40,000, 100,000-year-old sites plus. My site officers have to witness the cracks in rock art that's 40,000 years old, our caves over there. I can't understand it. Why is it that I have to struggle and stand up here and plead to government to protect something that is so rich for this country? All over the world they embrace their heritage. This country needs to start getting back to embracing theirs. There are, yeah. there are sites within the proposed sites of drilling. We need to protect them. <coughs> we witness the cracks that are within our mountains within the escarpment on country. We look at those cracks and we see what they're doing to our rivers and our creeks. We're over there, climbing around the ledges within the escarpment, tackling the leeches and the snakes, but grassroots, we are there on a daily, if not weekly, monthly basis, witnessing those cracks. And I talk to the miners, I've said this over and over again, I'm not anti-mining. Put bread and butter on the table, we all need to be fed. But you know what? We've got to open our eyes. There's time for compromise. We've got to stop carving up country. Go down into the mines and have a look at the pumps that are going. Have a look at how much water they're pumping out of those mines. Where's it coming from? It's coming from the top. It's draining our waterways. Coal seam gas mining. Drilling, blasting, extracting her water. Pumping large volumes of water and chemicals into her. Fracking. Let's cause more cracks. Let's expand on her cracks. I don't understand why. 
Is this meeting about protecting country, considering clean drinking water for future generations? A country of our grandchildren and great grandchildren? A country that they can be proud of? Is that what we're gonna leave behind for them? A country that will be able to produce, be able to feed them. Why are we continuing to carve up this country? Each well requires up to four hectares of cleared land. You know what, I don't think this meeting is just about coal seam mining. It's about hearing and listening. The way I hear and, and see it, this community has already sent a clear message to our government. No coal seam mining in this community. No coal seam mining across country. The community wants to protect country. No coal seam mining in our waterways, our catchments. No coal seam mining under our homes. We want clean water and we want good health and we want to protect country. We've sent a, gov a, a message to the government already. It's not a case of reconsidering. The expiry date's gone. Oh, hang on. Let's move the goalpost. Let's rewrite it. Let's modify it. I deal with variations to AHIP permits all the time. For those of you, you that don't know, AHIP permits are permits that give people the right to salvage and destroy Aboriginal artefacts and Aboriginal sites in this country. It's legislation. The mind boggles. It comes to my desk. I'm Aboriginal and I'm asked to say it's okay for this person to have an AHIP to destroy my heritage and my culture. It's not. It's not okay to modify a document that gives the right to do that either. The expiry date's passed. Let's not go backwards. I will sit and wait with interest and I will observe and I will see if the government is actually listening. Are they listening to the interests of community and country? Is that really what's on the government's agenda? Or is it about the almighty dollar? Water drawn from country, risk to our water sources, high in salt and methane and can contain toxic and radioactive materials. Jess has already said that. Our health, the impact on our water, contaminated water, risk of leaking, leaking methane from the pipes and the wellheads and the plants, risk of the gas causing fire, not to mention that Mother Earth will react. Earthquakes. I think enough is enough. The government has the capacity to save or to destroy our country. I will wait to see what they choose. 